Okay, great. Uh, so, can you hear me? Good morning. Am I audible? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Oh, great. Awesome. How are you? Great. How about you? Good, good, good. Awesome. So, let's begin today's session then. Sit comfortably. Keeping the back and neck straight. And gently close your eyes. Just start observing your breathing. Each inhalation and exhalation, just keep observing. Don't change your breathing. Keep your body light. Once you feel steady, uh, steady and comfortable, begin to deepen your breathing. Prepare yourself for Om um, Chanting. Inhale deeply for Om. Um. Um. Chant the Shanti Mantra. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Naradunaha Sarve Bhadra Pachyantu Mahashche Dukkha Mahashche Dukkha Inhale deeply for Keep the vibrations of the mantra. Join your palms together and wrap the palms together. Place them on the eyes. 
Okay, slowly while blinking and speaking to come back. Namaste. Let's begin today's session. So today we are going to talk about another very interesting topic. So today we are beginning with the schools of yoga. Right? So there are four very prominent schools of yoga. And today we are going to begin with the first one, which is Karma Yoga. Right. So before I begin with this topic, so schools of yoga, let me just briefly touch upon that. So um, whenever you uh, come into the study of yoga or become aware of the yoga practices, you will see that there are various ways in which yoga is being practiced. If we leave the modern times, like I told you, Hatha yoga is quite prevalent today. If we leave the modern times, uh, and uh, see overall broad categorization, right? There are four main schools of yoga. There are four main schools of thought, we can say, right? There are other schools of thought as well, right? Now you will see yoga come up in a lot of forms, right? So, hat yoga, then there is in yoga, uh, acro yoga, all of these things are coming up, but you will see overall general categorization has been done in four main schools of thought, right? And it, it, it's done because everybody has a, a different personality, right? So some of you, you would really love to, you know, uh, delve into intellectual conversation and read up a lot, right? Your style might be that. Your personality might be very analytical and cognitive in nature. Right? So at that point of time, you will begin your journey with something that suits this, uh, your, uh, you know, merges with this passion of yours, of reading, of intellectualizing, right? And it will be easier for you to stick with that if you are a very intellectual person and I ask you to have faith, you will struggle with it, right? And if you are not compulsorily, um, it's not compulsory for you to get bound to the devotion. You will probably end up leaving it after trying it for a few days, right? Same thing if somebody has a very emotional kind of uh, nature, right? So they will not be, if, if you tell them bookish things, they won't be able to connect that much. They are more connected to, you know, their emotions and how they can dedicate themselves and love love something right or uh, channel their emotions towards something so their emotions are strong so for them you know devoting themselves to a god uh, will be very helpful for them if they want to go on a spiritual journey, right so like this depending on the personality different thoughts came up so which uh, led to the formation of the different schools of yoga Right? And only the beginning point is different. So whatever your personality is, we will discuss all four schools of yoga. So if you feel this is your personality or this is what you believe in, you can go ahead and go deeper into the practices of that school of yoga, right? that school of thought. And eventually we'll see all of them start merging words. Right? So that happens eventually. But beginning point you can choose depending on what your personality is. And that is where this entire concept came up where the same thing was put in different, different ways, right? So karmio, when we talk of karmio, karma literally means action or work. Right? So action or work. Kind of literally, literally, this word means this thing. And when you uh, start reading up more about karma, you will see how it is targeting this thing, right? Your action 
or the work you do right so uh, you know some people at least on beginner level for karma yogi they believe in whatever they are doing right so if you feel that whatever you do makes a difference right and your contribution is uh, quite essential to make changes in a system or to feel that whatever you are contributing wherever you are working or wherever you are starting your contribution you can see first thing you are aware that your contribution is adding up something and you really believe in your own contribution right so you believe that whatever work you are putting in it's going to bring about a change right so karma yoga is the path of faith yeah there are a lot of activists out there who believe that if they you know stand up for the uh, right cause then a change will happen right so if you are one of them you can go ahead and begin with karma so karma for a beginner again starts at the action level but as you proceed in your practice you realize that the action is coming from somewhere else right so actions your actions it's not a coincidence that you are acting in a particular way right so as you go deeper on the path of karma you you realize that thought is the uh thing which is influencing your action right so action takes place on three levels the mind level speech and body so when we talk of karma we are covering actually all three of them but for a beginner maybe they just are very connected to their own actions so you can begin the journey with that and when they go deeper into karma they will see that the action is being worked on on all three levels right so when i was teaching you bhagavad gita i told you that the major schools have been mentioned in the text so if you go to chapter 3 of bhagavad gita right third chapter it is talking about karma here krishna and arjun are having a discussion that if somebody you know gets liberated all together what is the point of action you know which is a very common question that comes up in classes also when we say that detach yourself from the action and the uh, results right so a lot of students you know they go into this deep conflict that if i detach myself then i will never be ambitious right so if uh, arjun was also in a very deep conflict that if if i am liberated then what is the point of the action right but it is your nature to conduct action or have karma so in bhagavad gita krishna ji has mentioned that the fact that you are alive means that a particular karma is being conducted at each and every point of time you cannot escape right so if you think that karma is only action by the body then it is not right it i told you it goes down to the mental level as well right so suppose you are sitting right on a particular day you are just sitting but you are thinking constantly right the mind is thinking constantly and that is the karma that is taking place at that point of time right so krishna ji has himself said that if karma is not there we would not be alive right which directly means if you are alive some karma is being done at every point of time right you can realize it or you can just be oblivious to it that is up to us right how deeply we go into our practice but something is being conducted at every point of time and this is what the karma yogi targets right because the karma yogi has this deep understanding that they cannot live without this action right of the mind of the speech of the body and they also realize that they cannot leave the world right so sometimes we feel that you know we just have to leave the world in order to be liberated or be free so many yogis they go to mountains never come back then they get liberated right but no we need this whole process of yoga 
more than the yogi does right because we are existing in the day to day world right yogi has set his aim right they are definitely going to move towards their aim but for us to exist in the society and still be in a balance right that is what we have to do currently because you cannot leave everything behind you have your own set of responsibilities even if you do not have kids or are not married you know you you have parents right so or you have to take care of your own self if i just come down to this thing. so for your own survival you have to take care right so you have a set of responsibilities towards your own self and the people you grew up with or who put in so much time effort energy so that you could grow up study yeah get whatever you are looking for right so we have a sense of responsibility towards those people and if somebody tells us to go and live on a mountain we won't be able to do it right right so we have to exist in the society and we have to work on attaining this balance that is where karma yoga is very very important right it will help you to live your life better you will still do the same things but now your intention will change your intention your uh, you know the way in which you conduct yourself that is going to completely change you are going to do the same things but your way of conducting yourself changes like when we are at home we conduct ourselves very different right when we go to the office or go to our workplace we conduct ourselves very different so it's something like that yeah so you will conduct yourself differently because you will understand that this is how the action is supposed to be done nobody teaches us how the action is supposed to be done right how we are supposed to conduct ourselves this is not taught to us and for good reason only our previous generation wasn't taught that thing so how could they pass on right and there was a point in time when these basic uh, yogic practices were lost yoga remained to be like you know physical asana practice then pranayama practice but this day to day life thing which actually yoga is it's a way of living this was lost as the generation gen- as we came down from one generation to the other some places it is still there but if you live in a city or if you are completely disconnected right from your family then pro- chances are those things would not have been passed down that well to you right so as i said it is a way of living so how do you conduct your action that is the main thing that karmyu talks of because in this society you are going to deal with a lot of individuals and with your family with everybody around you. so how do you have to conduct yourself right so this we covered when we were doing um uh you know the definition of yoga also yoga karma su kaushalya right in the second chapter uh krishna ji gives this little bit hint on how the action is supposed to be done right and in the third chapter he again says that stopping the karma is not up to us if we stop that we will cease to exist but being detached from the results is up to us right so he says we do not have a choice where we want to have a choice right you have a choice somewhere completely different right and once you recognize this thing you will actually be able to put in work towards it. so be free from the results of your action right and this is very hard to do even though you know i have written this down and you will be like okay let us start working towards it even this is very very hard to achieve you know we when we offer somebody food or water who really needs it we still expect a thank right so we still expect their acknowledgement right so this thing goes on a very very deep level right and once you see that your action is being influenced by the thought that is when you realize your thought holds the main power if you work on your thoughts on your thinking process you will see that your actions are going to change your speech is going to change if you have negative thought towards someone you will bad mouth them bad mouth them right and you will take 
wrong actions from your body towards them because you have create you have some reason for some reason you have this thought that that person is not good so every time you speak of that person or that person you know is around you your body reacts in such a way that you're not able to stand right and you will see it's just the, the power of the thought which is supporting this entire reaction of the speech and the body right so constantly there is reaction and this chain being created in the mind so you have to work on the mental level the most the karma yogi also works on the mental purification but as a beginner we can begin with the actions that we are doing and we can do them with a sense of detachment where we are at least trying to do something because you know not because we want something out of right because but because it is supposed to be done like if you are uh, uh, growing up uh, you go to school so you are supposed to be a good student you are supposed to study you are supposed to you know do your homework right conduct yourself uh, correctly in the class right so same way this this is at that point of time because it is your responsibility to be a student right it is your duty to go to school every day complete your homework every day so that becomes your duty right so make sure you do it correctly then when you grow up you have to earn for yourself right so doing your job correctly right do not uh, try to like you know uh, find shortcuts it is your duty you have to do it so inculcating that sense of duty is very very important why because uh, not as a burden yeah so this sense of duty should not be incorporated as a burden it should be incorporated as a you are existing in this as this thinking that you are existing in the society and because you are taking from the society it is your responsibility to give back to the society as well if i am taking some resources from the nature if i am taking uh, some uh, some resources which are re- required for me to survive then it is my responsibility to give back also in the way that i am capable of giving back right so try to uh, start uh, sorry begin suspending that expectation from your actions and do everything with full concentration right so when i taught perfection i told you this full concentration just give me a second yeah okay so this full concentration and the action is very very necessary if i am half heartedly doing something whatever you do in your life if you do it with half focus somewhere else and half focus somewhere else you will end up like in a very common way injuring yourself right so suppose i am chopping something that right? i am in the kitchen and i am chopping vegetables and i am absent mindedly doing that thing. so what will happen i will end up cutting my own hand right so if you are not doing something with full concentration then you will see the immediate impact of that thing right when you are not fully present doing that thing you will immediately see how you are harming yourself when you are not fully present right because sometimes the mind you know mind has this tendency to run away all the time and we have not trained it to stay where it is so it becomes as a part of training the mind that you stay over here i am doing this thing you know constantly instructing it back to whatever you are doing is going to help you to practice karma yoga more deeply right like meditation in your meditation classes yes you sit for meditation for a, a few minutes in your class but the whole point of doing meditation is that it comes up into your day to day life right 
so can you helps you to infuse the meditation into your life and it is a great practice for somebody who is beginning their journey right karm yoga is relevant to high level practitioner and even beginner level practitioner they can work on perfecting their actions they can put that effort right towards perfecting their action giving it full concentration and dedication right what no matter what you are doing or how important it is or how unimportant it is each and everything uh, deserves your full attention right and you see when you do the things with full attention your mind is not tired right not tired it does not get tired because it's wandering and the energy of the mind is constantly being consumed towards uh, something you do not have to think about you see mind remains relaxed right you are not as tired as you uh, would be if you if your concentration is not there right so it gives this sense of relaxation it gives a sense of satisfaction your efficiency is bound to increase when you give each and every task full attention right for a karm yogi there is no high level task or low level task right the karm yogi will do the cleaning do the uh, you know day to day activities as well as they would uh, show up on their work and do it with full dedication so it doesn't matter if you are doing something which is not acknowledged in society we do not acknowledge it let things like you know picking food or cleaning the right so these things and when you show up for your work it doesn't matter what level of work you are doing it only matters how you are approaching that work right you if you approach your work with full dedication i don't know when but you definitely will reach the uh, highest point because your focus is not reaching the highest point your focus is that you do your work efficiently right so you will not have to chase that highest position you will get it by default it becomes a by product then you know like when you do meditation you will have a lot of by products right so those things become by products if they don't remain your main focus anymore your main focus is to make the most out of what you are doing a karm yogi always approaches whatever work they are doing like worship right they never uh, you know they never feel as if uh, i'm given this task or that task i don't want to do this thing or i want to do this thing. they see that it is their place of worship so when you come over here as students you know it is your place of worship right to be that student to receive knowledge with an open mind right and then you see whatever works for you you can implement it in that way but as a student you it's your duty to sit with an open mind right as a teacher this is my place of worship it's my duty to sit over here and transmit uh the knowledge to the best that i can right if i do anything less than that then i am causing disrespect to the position that i have been given right so if you are given any household work anything you are given right it becomes your uh place of worship when you start seeing things like that you start doing them with a lot of love and i already talked a lot about doing something with love in the food, in the class in which we discussed food right so when you you know keep your whatever work you are given you know keep your space in that way where you love everything you know that is when you see your entire room will have a completely different aura right now you love to clean your room now you uh, love to you know uh, make your bed that kind of thing right so you are suspending the attachment and you are shifting your focus towards a fully giving yourself to that task for that moment which will also lead to a lot of relaxation for you guys right so it's so difficult to always keep worrying about whatever we have done will we get that thing yeah sometimes when we are very very attached to the result doesn't that come up a lot it causes a lot of stress suppose you give some interview or you give some exam 
so so attached to the result that all the time there is tension in your mind right that uh, did will i get this these many marks or will i get that job or not right so it becomes a source of stress your own attachment becomes the source of stress instead of the other thing happen right where you are just completely relaxed and you're doing things just because they are meant to be done at that point right so karl meo talks about harmonizing your actions with the mind so there should be no conflict between the mind and the action so sometimes you think differently and we act differently right so as you begin to practice karl meo you will see that this thing you know stops happening this thing is going to uh, lessen at least i don't know how long it will take to stop but that conflict that you face where the mind is in another direction and your actions are totally in different direction this conflict begins to go away because you are harmonizing your actions on all the levels right and i told you thought plays the most important role right when you are uh, going into the practices of karma right so next time when you do your actions again those same qualities are there but your work is like a place of worship for you right so how we worship god you know when we go to the temple you know we are very silent one thing we are very silent yeah and uh, we you know i do things very slowly also but there right so we are not running around in the temple people don't run around in the temple they very you know they wait for their uh, chance right and they are very very silent over there and they show up very respectfully so it's like it's your place of worship you have made your actions your place of worship right whatever you do no matter what you're doing in the day i'm not talking about your profession i'm saying anything that you do and surrendering all your actions to god right so this is the part where the belief comes in the bhakti yog begins to merge into the karma yog concept because before this okay you are trying to attain perfection in action so you are trying to detach yourself you are doing the work with full concentration you are considering it to be your duty all right but when you go on a deeper level in karma yog you will see this thing that now you are devoting your action to something higher than you you realize whatever you are contributing the purpose of that thing is much more than you right and when you reach the state of mind that is when again this surrendering attitude is going to help you to get in the detachment in your action so it's going to merge that thing in the actions that you do so this is the when krishna ji you know arjun asked that you know should i suspend action so krishna ji said no it is your nature you know like i told in sankhya prakriti and purush right two components are there right so it is the nature of the prakriti or nature itself where the action needs to be performed so krishna ji says no you have to perform the action but it is superior if you are you know you reach the final source of enlightenment and then when you spread that knowledge that is a very superior action and you should do that because it will always serve the people around you so your action should have this quality that it shouldn't hurt anyone right so sometimes we think that okay now we have to do with detachment we have to give our full concentration so let me go into something destructive right because same thing same analogy uh, you will go into something destructive you will do it with full concentration right and you will do it with a sense of detachment and you will gain success in it right so where do you draw the line right of what is right and what is wrong so this thing where it should not destruct anybody and even for your own life you know what action is better for you so something that elevates you always choose a habit or something that you ha- add or inculcate within yourself to be something which makes you a better person does not pull you down right if some if suppose 
you are planning to add something new to your routine, then see, see very closely check this thing. Are you getting better because you are doing that thing? Or are you going down, right? Sorry. Yeah. So even, so for today, your homework is that uh, just jot down your daily routine, right? And then you can see what, you can take a few minutes to give to each and everything that you do during the day and see if it makes you better or if it makes you uh, go in a negative direction, right? So this is totally up to how you perceive your actions, but it is a great way to reflect and begin this journey where you are just seeing whatever you do, do during the day. Is it actually helping you or is it making your life worse? And if you remove that thing, you will feel much better, right? So the solution just lies in that little thing, right? So today we are going to work on doing this thing, right? So now I mentioned the right action and wrong action. So let me, let me talk a little bit about this thing also, right? So when we are talking about right and wrong action, so what becomes our source? You know, how do we judge what is right and wrong? So for this also, three things have been given, right? The first thing is your own common logic. You know, common sense is very uncommon. Yeah, you would have heard of this thing. And it is quite uncommon. But your own common sense, what you think is right or you think is wrong. So you can work on that. And how do you work on developing it? You read certain books which help you to develop that moral code for yourself. So they can be spiritual books which will actually tell you what is right and what is wrong. So it develops your discrimination power. So now you will know what is right and what is wrong, right? Or in general, whatever you are doing, is it right or is it wrong? So first thing that you rely on is your own cognition, your own reasoning. And this reasoning can be developed through various books that you can uh, rely upon. Yeah, preferably going for more spiritual books because uh, those are like very authentic sources, right? So going in that study will help you to discriminate between right and wrong. And you can take up your action accordingly. Then the next uh, thing which is uh, very important when it comes to action is the, if suppose you cannot develop your common logic, right? It's not for everyone, right? Some people you will find they, their age is very, like they, uh, the number of their age is quite high, but their mind is not developed. So common sense is not developed. And suppose you cannot find the correct source also, which you can consult again and again. So what is the next source that you can rely on? So it's your guru, right? So anybody who is, uh, whom you believe in and is ahead of you in your spiritual journey, you can uh, look for a proper guru, right? And whatever the guru tells you, that becomes your basis of right and wrong. Again, over here, your surrender is going to come in, right? Because just believing in the guru is also an act of, Surrender, right? And see, this is how very uh, closely bhakti yoga also merges with karma, right? So next source for you is your guru. Suppose something cannot be understood through the books. That is also one case where you will need a guru, right? So you will need somebody who guides you and tells you what is right and wrong, who has experienced much more than you, who is ahead of you in this journey. They will be able to guide you well. So just believing whatever that person is saying is true. Emptying your own cup so that you can fill it in with more information, right? So that thing will help you to distinguish. Then when both of these don't work, and this is a very high level, okay? So this is a very, very high level. If you go very deep into your meditation, you will realize that you your own system is telling you what is right and what is wrong. You are just not connected, in, right? So this is for advanced level student, not for a beginner. Beginner can either rely on common sense or work, work in collaboration with the good, right? But for high level student, developing 
going very deep into your practice so that you can see you know what is right and what is wrong for you you know there is this internal voice which again and again tells you don't do this don't do this don't do this and then you go ahead and do it right so that in a voice you can still hear but it's not very clear right and it can be easily confused with the other voice inside of you which criticizes right so this voice that i'm talking about is never critical right it will always tell you what is best for you yeah it's always going to push you in a positive direction right so this voice you know uh, leaders like osho they have said intuition they were use the word intuition for this so as you go deeper into your own sadhana into your own practice and meditation you will see you uh, develop this inner voice and when you develop this inner voice when you become capable of hearing it you will see you will always take the right action like i told you in the case of food also you know when you eat something which is not good for you your body screams right your body cannot take that thing but your taste buds are so like dominant the impact is so much that you don't see that what is happening when that thing goes within your own system so gaining this understanding is very very important right when you gain this understanding that this is what is happening to me right when the food goes in my system feels very very you know as if it's burning if you are in touch with these sensations of the body you will automatically nobody will have to motivate you that stop eating bad food stop eating this food that food you will yourself end up leaving those things because your system gets so agitated and you are connected right third basis for you to fall back on when you are doing karma yoga is that this this thing is going to tell you your own inner voice when you go deeper into meditation it's going to tell you that this is correct and this is not correct and you trust that voice right so that is how you proceed on the path of karma for day to day purposes you can also practice karma yoga uh, by going and serving in places right so suppose you believe in some cause right so uh, you can go ahead and volunteer for those things so when you volunteer you will see you are contributing and you are getting detached from your own action right so when you do this thing when you go for service when you um, take out some time in your uh, week or in your day where you serve somebody selflessly it is going to develop your practice of karma because that selflessness will be experienced during that time so you will get a taste of what you are aiming for when you are doing your day to day activities right so it's going to give you a very good taste into how your state of mind is meant to be right and for karma yogi once again even the action i have talked of action only mostly uh, the thoughts you know uh, there is stability in the mind when they do something there is stability in the mind so right now when we do something you know and the mind is totally chaotic we cannot do that thing properly right so karma yoga works on establishing this very thing it works on establishing this stability in the mind through the action to the action of the body through the action of the speech to the action of the mind it's going to harmonize all of your actions so that the uh, the harmony that you are looking for it comes through your way of existence right so all of us even if we you believe in any other school of yoga you like any other school of yoga all of us can uh, induce a flavor of karma yoga into those things because even if you are a bhakt and you are devoting yourself you are performing some actions and how you have to perform that action is what karma yoga tells you you know how you have to do the things that you are doing and it's a great way to train your own mind to train your body it requires it will require a lot of discipline right and there is no shortcut so 
the earlier you begin to work the sooner you will reach your destination and it is always going to promote a sense of balance a sense of harmony within you right so if you are very interested in karmyo you can go ahead and read the third chapter of bhagavad gita you will gain much more detail in this chapter right uh, there is also one book that you can read if you are very very interested in karmyo Okay, so there is this book uh, called Karanya Bhundi by Swami Vivekananda. I'll we'll just spell that out. Uh, S-W-A-M-I, Swami Vivekananda. V-I-V-E-K-A-N-A-N-D-A. Swami Vivekananda has written uh, books on each and every school of yoga. So the one that you like the most, you can uh, go ahead and order that book. thin books not very uh, as far as i remember they are not very uh, uh, thick they are tiny right uh, so you can read them quickly and um, it's not about reading his books quickly uh, the way in which he has written it will take you a lot of time to process how he has written the things right so uh, i have his book on raj yoga so it's a very tiny book very tiny and it's very thin also but uh, it takes a lot of while to absorb what he has written but he had great great in depth understanding of the schools of yoga and his books are very very good if you like any form of uh, any school right any of the schools you can go ahead read in detail uh, from the book that he has written right so any doubts in karma yoga or uh did you understand you don't have to leave your action yeah in no matter what stage you reach through in your practice you don't have to leave the action right so any doubts in this anything that you are conflicted about no doubts no? Oh. great all right so i think then we can end today's session so keep the back next straight gently close your eyes we'll chant om one time followed by three shantis inhale deeply for om shanti 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 join your palms together in front of the chest let's bow down and begin our day with a sense of gratitude this being thankful for everything we have so we begin to rub your palms together keep them on your eyes Very slowly while blinking and looking at your palms, open up your eyes, start coming back to the smile, and look at the other one. Ah, uh, there is the mention of one technical term when you read Karma Yoga in Bhagavad Gita, so I'll just mention that quickly.
you will come across this term and this term basically just means that you are detached from the results of the actions that you are putting in so you will find this term right when you read bhagavad gita so this is what it means right so let's meet for pranayam uh, at 3 today uh, om shanti to everyone take care and bye bye shanti thank you see you om shanti thank you bye